hello welcome to or welcome back to my channel my name is sam and welcome to booktober day 22 <laughs> but welcome to booktober welcome to my channel this is the third and technically final installment of battle of the booktubers with me and my three amazing competitors and of course our gracious host Danny. This is the last round for the year as well. <sighs> Sticky stuff. It's it's coming to the end. Oh my goodness. But that also means that I have to read some things. So in this reading vlog I will be reading two books from booktuber IH H H. <laughs> I believe that is correct. So I'll be reading from booktuber H, who I think is probably Krista, but who is to say? Who is to know? It could go any way. Um, these could also very well be Jess picks, um, because again, Jess and I just read similar, so it's easy to assume anything that we'd have in common could be her. <laughs> but um, yeah, so in this I'll be reading a horror hello, let's go. Um, a very popular and widely known and pretty beloved horror. So I'm intrigued to see where I land with it. And then I'm also reading a beloved Wi-Fi? <laughs> a beloved YA sci-fi that um, I'm excited to be finishing. <laughs> I'll just say that for now. But yeah, if you're unaware, Battle of the Booktubers is a little competition where us four are in one round recommending each other books that we think the others may like in hopes to get all those sweet, sweet points um, and be deemed the best recommender of the competition. I definitely think that it's gonna be tough to really know who's gonna win and which way the things sway. I'm gonna be done with these videos before everything is out in the public so I will be learning alongside you guys how it's gone and how it's going and how people feel about things which is I think exciting. This being week three though I'm sure you know a little bit about this by now you've seen some videos I hope that you've been watching all the other competitors or maybe you came to my channel because of the other competitors and Danny but of course everybody will be linked down in the description and if you're seeing this video first make sure you check out the other three as well to see where the competition lies. Um, I hope you've been playing along with on Danny's community tab and like seeing who you think might win. I'm very excited and intrigued to see how this competition ends. And also I will shout out now whilst I'm remembering that the live show will be November 2nd. I believe it's going to be noon for me, which is Pacific Standard Time. So 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, and the five of us are going to get on. We're going to chit chat about the books that we read and like how the points worked out and all the, the, the behind the scenes gossip and tea. And then I think after that, we'll probably do some reading sprints with some, if not all of us. So yeah, that'll be really fun. So that's coming up just so that you are aware. But with that said, let's jump in to the first book that I need to read for this video. Okay, so I've <laughs> got a little, little update. I have started Bird Box, which is, I think, like arguably a decent pick. It's horror, it's Josh Mallerman's debut, and I haven't read anything from this author before. So it's like a bit of a gamble, but I love horror. But it's also a pretty mainstream book after like it got an adaptation on Netflix with either Sandra Bullock or I, yeah Sandra Bullock. I can understand why it was recommended because it's incredibly popular mostly like high ratings not very many people rate it low but also like there's that gamble of how much knowledge do I have of this book going into it how much interest do I have in it it wasn't even on my want to reads on goodreads it just wasn't something I thought I would ever read um once like the movie came out I didn't see the movie because I genuinely just like haven't had an interest in this type of story I'm really not into like post-apocalyptic stories where there's like eldritch monsters and um you have to fight for your life and you can't see anything which I think takes away like I, I, it's such a weird craft where it's like you can't really describe anything that you see which takes a lot of the scare factor away it's kind of like if you're watching a movie and it was just black the whole time and you're just hearing things, which is a different level of fear for sure. But at the same time, like takes 
some of that element away. So I'm not sure where I'm going to fall. I think the writing is fine. I'm listening to the audiobook, of course. Um, Bird Box, if you don't know, for some reason, if you haven't heard of this, um, we're following Mallory and her two kids in a post-apocalyptic type world. They can't see things because previously something had happened in society whether it's monsters or a disease or something but when there was stories of people attacking people and then killing themselves and so it's just like don't look at anything don't look at the world and you can be safe and so we're getting flashbacks of Mallory when she was pregnant with her kids and she goes and joins like this group after her sister dies and she joins this group to basically like live on a commune try to like stay alive which truly I think another reason why I don't do post-apocalyptic stories is like I just won't be alive like I'll just die um pretty early on like I've accepted that fate for myself like I'm not a survivor no <laughs> it's not gonna happen but we're gonna get the backstory of Mallory with this group and like we got saw some of the relationship with her sister being pregnant like there's a lot of her backstory that I do enjoy and then present day I'm not sure what the objective is but basically Mallory and her two kids she's got a boy and a girl I don't know if they even have names but the three of them get in this boat and slowly are making their way somewhere for something I'm not sure if it's like to meet another group and try to survive with other people or what have you I know that like the backstory is obviously going to at some point get us to like why she's alone with her kids and like what went wrong there but it's not like the most gripping story for me personally luckily it's on the shorter side audio wise so it won't take me super long to get through I'm only 20% in it's just it's one of those stories where like not a lot happens and I already know that's gonna be like ambiguous because we're not really gonna get answers to everything going on we're not gonna see everything happening and so a lot of it is just like the power of the mind like what can you picture like what's gonna scare you in these instances and so I think it's just one of those stories that I'm not like the target audience for which is difficult because I can see the craft I can see that it's okay writing for a debut I think it's like good it's uh not quite a cult classic but it's quite popular and famous which I think is part of like the struggle of like I never had an interest in it and I'm trying to be open-minded of course during this whole thing but it's also cool because I can now share with you guys my my do's and don'ts of books what I do and don't like but yeah it's just not like hooking me in but I like the backstories so far but I'll update you tomorrow when I finish and hopefully I've got good news <laughs> hey guys um I don't think I ever finished updating you guys on Bird Box like I have a memory that I did <laughs> apparently I just didn't I just didn't do that so my final thoughts for Bird Box are that <sighs> how do I want to phrase this I don't think Bird Box is bad. I think that I had a little bit too much knowledge from like the movie commentary side of things going into it. Um, for a debut, I don't think it's bad. I wish that there were some elements that were just a little bit more played up. It's not super scary. I don't care for post-apocalyptic stories. Not not my my not my thing really. But I do. I did like the writing and the atmosphere, the setting. It was scary. I didn't care about the present though. And that was my biggest issue. And I just I just wanted to be in those previous chapters where like things were happening. That's where the action really is. I don't really care about these three people in a boat. <laughs> like that's just, it wasn't as entertaining, but it does help the reading process. Cause you're like, okay, once I finish this though, I can go back to the like previous chapters that I liked more. I can go back to that timeline. and. Um, finish it and like have a good time. So overall I did enjoy the atmosphere and setting. Um, I wish that it honestly amped up more of the horror. Not having visual sight doesn't lend as scary to me when it's just like sounds. I kind of wish that it was played into a little bit more just to give it a, something because I just felt although it's a short and quick book um, the ending was expected if not a little bit predictable but at the same time not as it's not like unsettling or anything it's just like a nice clean happy ending which is great I don't have any issues with that per se but I there was no like proper twist or reveal like everything felt beat by beat what was supposed to happen and I know that it's horror and not thriller but I usually like some kind of twist in my horror books 
overall, um, glad that I've read this because it's very popular. People <laughs> really love it. It's very widely enjoyed. Josh Mallerman is a huge author now. Uh, this book has been turned into a movie starring Sandra Bullock. It's like, that's a big deal. Will I watch the movie? Probably not. It's just not super interesting to me. I think that the movie would be scarier though because we're able to see what's happening to the characters rather than just like it being dark and black. So we get to feel the more anticipation of what the characters are going through. Whereas with this, I kind of already knew they'd be fine and I wasn't too worried for them. But yeah, I think that it's good for a debut horror. I'm really excited to continue with my journey with this author. Their most recent book, Incidents Around the House, I believe. Super intrigued in that one. Um, scary Kids, sign me up. <laughs> like I'm, I'm really excited for that one. But I think this is a good pick for me and I completely understand why it was decided for me. It just, something about it didn't quite click or intrigue me. And I do genuinely think that if I read this years ago, maybe before the movie had come out, I would have gotten more enjoyment out of it. Because when you go into books like knowing a lot about it, it's hard to have the same enjoyment and like not expect so much. So yeah, I don't know. It's complex. I don't know quite how I feel or why, but that's the best way that I can put it into words for you today. I think it's just a solid three star book. I was gonna say three and a half, but it feels more like a three. The writing was good, the setting and atmosphere were good, the characters were fine. I really like the past timeline, which is why I enjoyed the book as much as I did. Um, it was a quick and easy listen. It wasn't like a super long book that was drawn out. Like it very much had good pacing. It was just like a very good book, but not standout best that I've read. And that's my conclusion for Bird Box and how I felt about it. Now I have one final book to read and then I will end out this video. But yeah, I'll check in with you guys when I get started on that one. Oh, we got a lot to talk about with that one. <laughs> oh boy, howdy. Okay, so this next book we need to talk about and I'm a little nervous talking about it but it's Scythe and if you are new to my channel hello welcome what a time um hope you're enjoying booktober but <laughs> um I feel bad for the person who recommended this to me who I think might be Krista if not Jess and maybe Jolene who's to say anymore um, the thing about this is, this has been on my current reads, on Goodreads, since April of 2022, which means I'm over halfway <laughs> of this book. And it was one of those things where I was like, this is the second book recommended to me, I believe. Okay, so this was their number one pick for me. And so it feels bad to say like, nah, no. Uh, because I already have an experience with this, but I also already have an experience with it. So it's pushing me to finally finish it. And maybe that was the gift that they were giving me. They were being like, Sam, it's time. It's time to finish this book. Why has it taken me so long? Simply, I have no reason. I think part of it is because I am significantly slower and worse at picking up just physical books. Um, when it's an e-reader, I'm a little bit quicker about it, but physical books without audios hard for whatever reason like I refuse to get this audiobook from Audible I don't know what my deal is but Scythe by Neil Schusterman is a sci-fi first book in a trilogy following two characters Rowan and Citra I remember so much about this book it's insane these two are like high schoolers and they get chosen and picked to follow an apprenticeship to the Reapers what do they call them Scythes obviously <laughs> that makes sense. I think his name's like Fernandin Faraday maybe and he has them as apprentice. He's teaching them the ways of the sites which basically these are a group of people in a society where you don't naturally die. So they mimic deaths in many different ways and kill the population to keep kind of control of the numbers and so on and there's kind of like a big brother Thunderdome situation. Is it Thunderdome? Shoot, I don't remember. Thunderhead situation where like you're being kind of monitored and watched. We are following Rowan and Citra. We're going back and forth between their POVs as they're going through the trainings, which I really love the apprenticeship. I thought that was like a really cool part. There's like this big conference where all the scythes go to like meet up and hang out for a little bit. 
and then there's like the bad boy group of the sites who I can't I despise them so much <laughs> and so basically something happens to their master that's not the right word what is it your printer you're an apprentice to the master but like what is the other word for that um their teacher we're gonna call him the teacher and he dies or disappears something happens to him and the whole conference is like you can't have two apprentices that's bad and things lead to things and so Rowan and Citra are separated and are being mentored by mentor that's the word are being mentored by somebody else now um Citra has gone with a female scythe who is like kind of cool but a little strict and Rowan has gone to the bad boy group of just the worst people like they get joy out of being scythes which like I guess like is good I guess it's a little twisted and messed up and I am liking it it's a very easy read it's YA I've had no issues like it's not beautiful prose or anything it's very easy and quick to read but for whatever reason like I'm not gripped to pick it up all the time and every time I do pick it up I fly through it and I feel good and I'm enjoying it and then I put it down and like walk away for a year I don't know what it is but I'm glad that this will finally force me to read this dang thing so that's my plan I have 183 pages left I'm gonna just pick up where I left off because I remember everything clearly um my IRL friend group we do game nights and talk about books all the time I got them into reading it's a great time they've all read this my boyfriend and our friend Austin both Austin's I know confusing they both read this kind of together and they both gave it five stars they really enjoyed it they loved it maybe four and then our friend Kirsten read this and she really liked it and I'm like the last one <laughs> even though I started reading this two years ago so it is about dang gosh tarn tarn time that I finish this book so this is my only plans for this evening we are going to sit on the couch we're gonna have some dinner and we're gonna knock this out hopefully tonight if not tomorrow because um deadlines <laughs> so yeah this is my big plan though um is finishing scythe which thank you truly for making me do this because this is it's ridiculous like I it's ridiculous it's gonna feel so good to accomplish this book and then I can actually continue in the series which I'm excited for because again I like the book I just don't like Rowan's chapters and we've been so in his head and with him for so long that I'm like okay I would like to move on also one thing that I do love about this is there's like little diary entries if you will from like different journals um and I love it I love it so much it's just very gripping I love the world building so much easy to read I don't know what my problem is but it won't be a problem for much longer because today we are reading this thing so I've caved and I bought the audiobook because I am just unable to pick this up I don't know what it is I've been procrastinating it so bad I re-listened to the entire book up to chapter 27 which is where I've been at because <laughs> and that's here's the thing I remembered everything nothing was like oh yeah I forgot about this detail like I remembered everything that happened even though it's been two years but I just can't seem to pick it up so we're gonna finish it tonight we have the audiobook there's nothing to stop me. I've got a cozy fire. I have a deadline. <laughs> I have to do this. So we're going to finish this, finally. But oh my gosh, why don't I want to pick it up? Hello. It has finally happened. I have read Scythe. It has been two and... It has been two years and six months. I started this book in April of 2022, and I have just finished it. Uh, I ended up buying the audiobook, as I mentioned, and listened to it up to the point where I was in the book. It's not that this is a bad book. Um, the writing style isn't my favorite because it's very head hoppy, uh, where like you'll be in five different chapter perspectives and you just get this little paragraph break and then you're in somebody else's head and you get into the heads of everybody around. And I understand for the part like, oh, we want you to know more than the main characters. We want the reader to be on the inside of things. But I just didn't, I don't love that in books in general. So like, it's something that doesn't work for me. I couldn't tell you why. I mean, I can kind of tell you why this wasn't like a full win. Because, oh boy, howdy, it takes so long to get to point A to point B. It, the lead up, the beginning is so strong and so good. And then the middle is just like, bleh. And I hate Rowan. He's insufferable. He's not fun to be around. He's just not interesting to me. Uh, he gets interesting towards the end, of course, but, like, when he is with Scythe Goddard the whole time, I'm just like, I don't care. I don't- I understand what it's portraying, 
and how it's explaining like the differences of the Saitam and how some people have compassion and it means something more to them whereas others are just like in it for the gleamings and aren't super uh, cool and chill and I, I understand all of like just position between Rowan and Citra's situation and like how their characters are developing throughout the story. I, I get it. It just didn't work for me. I wasn't interested in his like chapters. I honestly, if this was just Citra's book, I probably would have liked it a lot more. I find Citra very interesting. I found like their training cool and then earlier the midpoint uh, event happens that like shakes up the whole story and I knew the twist for that. I knew the reveal so it wasn't shocking I knew it was coming at some point I guessed it when my boyfriend was reading this two years ago like I've known for a very long time and so a lot of my reading experience was like just waiting for the ball to drop like waiting for the reveal to happen um which definitely like is my own me problem I definitely like <laughs> it's annoying that I like stopped reading and like put this down for so long at the point that I did because I was probably like four or five chapters away from like it picking up speed and like really going somewhere and getting interesting and yeah the ending is interesting the ending is good it's one of those situations where like by completion I'm like oh yeah four stars but like for how long it truly took me to finish it and like having a good ending and beginning but bad middle like I don't know if I can truly give it like a true four stars it's probably three stars or three and a half stars I think for the length that this took me to read three stars but like in my hardest of hearts I think the book itself objectively is like a four stars I think it's good I understand why people like it I'm very excited to continue in the series someday it's just one of those things like it just simply wasn't quite gripping enough which is hilarious but hey I'm so happy if this was Krista thanks you did me a real one I've finally finished this book and that feels great I can take this off of my um current readings off Goodreads, it's gonna feel great. I can officially rate this book. But yes, that is going to be it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed and um, liked it. <laughs> Welcome to the finale for Battle of the Booktubers officially. I am excited. The live show is going to be November 2nd if you want to hang out with us and talk about like the points and the inside scoop and all of the fun little things going on and see who won. I am excited. I do have a sneaking suspicion that Jess will win, but you know, you never know. You never know. That's just my guess. Um, but this was a lot of fun. I really liked this little challenge, this little uh, competition um, experiment, if you will. I had a lot of fun with it and I'm glad that I was able to participate and like be one of the competitors. I'm excited to see how everything wraps up in the end and how everyone's vlogs go. Um, oh yeah, this was a lot of fun. I hope that you guys enjoyed the journey with me and the other contestants. I look forward to chatting with you all in the live show about all of the books that were read and the points and like the theories and all, all of the, all the good stuff. I look forward to seeing what you guys thought as well. Um, but yeah, make sure you go check out Danny who is hosting all of this. Uh, there was going to be like a winners round coming up so definitely keep your eyes peeled for that definitely check out all of my fellow competitors down below and watch their videos and show support to the community um but yeah that's going to be it for this video i hope that you guys enjoyed and i will see you all tomorrow bye